One. Hey, two. Hey, one. Hey, two. Hey, three. Hey, four. Hey. back on the stage, but we yes. were honored to be uh, an audience member for 5280 Artist Coop. Their uh, presentation was, what was it, one... One night, six plays. One night, six plays. Yes, This absolutely. is their third time doing this, right? I believe so. This Maybe even their fourth. I, I might, can't remember. It might be yeah. their fourth. I think so. So basically, there are one act plays written by people of color, mm -hmm. and um, they, they put it on for one night, and they have different themes for each play. Yes. Um, 5280 Artist Coop is uh, co-founded by three lovely black women, women of color. Yes. Uh, Adrian Fullwood. Yes. Kenya uh, Fashaw. And um, Kenya Mahogany Fashaw. Yeah, yeah, Kenya, yes. Kenya Mahogany <laughs> Fashaw. Y'all know her as Mahogany the poet. Yes. yes. And. Um, Mrs. Hancock. Yes, yes. Stephanie, Stephanie Hancock. Hancock. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so they've been in business for quite some time, about six six years maybe or so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're located on, uh, I think it's 1400 Dallas Street. This is their last show in that space. They don't know if they're going to be there, but keep abreast on them and keep following them as they do good works. Absolutely. We were um, honored. We came in a little bit late in the game, so the, the uh, show started on April 30th. It'll be closing on May 29th. Tickets are $25 at the door. And twenty. I'm sorry, $25 online and $26 at the door. Yes, and you can go to www dot 5280artistcoop mm -hmm. to uh, get that c-o-o-p uh, dot com and uh, yeah get your tickets and definitely support uh, African American arts mm -hmm. and uh, get out there and get your seats in the theater because yeah yeah. That, yeah get up did I say that right you did yeah okay good <laughs> yeah and just so you know that because the theaters are opening uh, Raven and I will be doing more reviews for theater we're, yes. we're excited so be gentle with us yeah <laughs> we're trying to get away from the TV because we're trying to get out. Yeah. All right. So let's get started. Yeah. Uh, so there was uh, One Night Six Plays 2021. There were some stellar actors in there that I absolutely thought were fabulous. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give a couple of the names. Um, uh, Abed Hassan, mm -hmm. uh, Annie Sand, Don Randall, Evan Williams, Gandia Johnson, Joey Laughlin, Latifah Johnson, Michaela Murray, Monica, I think that's Dion Shu, and Steve Wise. And let's not forget Aubrey Fullward, who was the dancer yes. between the acts a phenomenal dancer beautiful dancer yes. she's absolutely riveting mm -hmm. so uh do you want to just go through the plays one by one sure or? let's okay, uh so so uh we're gonna go through the plays give a little bit you just we're not gonna give away what it was just give a little thought what our takeaways were sure what we liked about the play and then we're gonna keep it moving because we don't want to we really don't want to just uh you know destroy the you know like, yeah we want you to be excited yeah again. It, it, but these yeah. plays were very thought-provoking plays so the first one we seen was well I believe it was The Moors by Chris Black. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this kind of delved into academia and colorism, if you will. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that was a very interesting take. I don't want to give too much away, mm -hmm. but uh, they were doing a production of Othello and um, uh, African-American student is kind of expecting to get the role and it goes kind of from there. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the actor in this play uh, were Evan Williams, Annie Sand, and Joey Laughlin. Very good, phenomenal actors. Um, this, in my, my opinion, was about discriminations and unconscious biases that are still prevalent in theater and on, on film in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. um, it made me think about Selma Hayek. I just read an article about her and how she was discriminated, that she was up for two prominent lead roles, but was turned down because she was Mexican wow. and a woman. And so my takeaway about this film is that um, a lot of times we, um, because there was one thing uh, when uh, the the um, 
the actor, Evan Williams, was offered because he didn't get the role, even though he should have gotten the role because Othello was black, um, the uh, professor offered him as an assistant director. Mm -hmm. And so my takeaway was that sometimes we don't get what we want um, because there's still those stigmas that we can't do a lead role on stage or on film. So they offer us a seat at the table and they offer us accolades, money, material things, and prestige, but it's really not solid of what we are there for. So that was my takeaway on that play. What was Absolutely. yours? Absolutely. Mine was that um, uh, in terms of academia and uh, the Ivy, Ivy League, I guess, you know, that you will not see diversity because it's not always um, for their alumni and the people mm -hmm. that are paying the big tuition. So that's a really sad thing in America that we need to get over. It almost reminded me of, and I brought this up before, uh, the white, Effie white, or uh, remember it was in um, Orange is the New Black yes. and they had a white girl play, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Dream Girls. So yeah, that's True. kind of what it reminded mm -hmm. me of. So yeah, yeah really disheartening. Yeah, so great takeaways from, from each of us. Mm -hmm. um, so the next one was The Lessons by Kenya Mashaw. Uh, Fashaw. Now, Kenya never, never fails me. She so is true. a phenomenal poet, singer, author, writer, director. She mm -hmm. is just good, and I'm always looking forward to her plays. Um, the, the actors in here were Stevie Wise, Monica Dionsi, and Don Randall. <laughs> this was uh, a very interesting play. Um, Again, it's more um, the obvious discriminations from our counterparts, but the contrast was the misjudgments of the discriminations and unconscious bias that we have about one another. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things that I loved in there was the contrasting simultaneous uh, monologues that the two played in this uh, this. Uh, one act. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. That was so powerful. Don Randall was uh, really amazing and mm -hmm. so was Monica mm -hmm. as far as being really believable mm -hmm. in her role of uh, this uptight kind of counselor, really judgy mm -hmm. counselor um, and uh, a principal that's trying to reach a student who's been through uh, a tragedy that he can relate to with this with this fellow student and the student is very gifted and he's African American mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's it's really beautiful to see a uh, 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 adolescent who's struggling with their identity and with their issues and where they fit in the world, and with a uh, authority figure who really wants to be there and is getting rejected because they don't feel understood. So it was just really amazing and really uh, powerful, powerful, yeah. powerful. Yeah, it was definitely a powerful piece. My takeaway was that. Um, sometimes when we look good on paper, but people haven't physically seen us, <laughs> that we all have these misconceptions and prejudgments of how one is going to act. Um, that was something very prevalent um, by the character that Monica played. Yes. She seen this beautiful person on paper, but in person she didn't realize that the two coincide. Yeah, also the unconscious biases that um, also the uh, principal or the director of the school had. Um, with the actual new student. So we all have to be aware. That was my main takeaway for that. It was a great, like I said, Kenya Fashal, she never fails me. I always look good. Look forward to her work. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so powerful, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the next one was Don't Hate Me Because I'm Beautiful yeah. by Mario Farwell. Uh, this one was hilarious. Ah, very. <laughs> <laughs> I totally enjoyed myself. Oh my God. Okay, the actors in there was uh, Abid, uh, Hassan, Don mm -hmm. Randall, Gandia Johnson, Michaela Murray, and Joey Laughlin. Incredible. It was like the comic relief of the whole set. Yes. Of the whole, you know, vignettes. Of all the vignettes. It was hilarious. And Don Randall outdid himself. Oh, I my mean, God. He went there. Oh, my God. He yeah. went there. Mm -hmm. He went there. Mm -hmm. You got to see it. I mean, oh, my God. <laughs> He, he, me. <laughs> he was totally, I would swear, he was a method actor, actor in that yeah. one. He was, he, he went there. Uh, and uh, so this was about prejudice, racisms, and biases ones ha have. And they made it re uh, relatable as far as like animals. They use a dog, a cat, hippo, rat, and a bird. It was incredibly hilarious. And it was very um, relatable. Like you could relate to everything about uh, this play. Um, yeah. Very funny the actors really embellished 
and embody their characters of yeah. these animals. Yeah, and I <laughs> love the costumes and the makeup. Mm -hmm. um, everybody did a really great job. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I liked Abid uh, Hassan. He was quite uh, lovable and really funny, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michaela was good. Uh, she plays. She played the bird, right? Yeah. She was She was really funny. She's crazy. Yeah, um, the, and oh, um, one of my favorites was Gandia, who plays the kitty. Oh my <laughs> so gosh, she was amazing. I really enjoy her work. Gandia is is a very authentic actor and uh, she took me there. Um, but Don, I, I would say he stole the show. He Don stole, stole the, the show. He stole the yeah. show. Yeah. So my takeaway with this this vignette was um, something that stood out because um, it does it does deal with uh, prejudice, racism, and biases was that um, when you kill it in sport, when you kill it's a sport but others are murdered. Um, and so that there was that was a, a kind of a, a preface of something they said in there, and it just made me think that no matter how many credentials we have, no matter how much we strive for education, financially, whatever accolades, that it doesn't make someone to accept us. Um, sometimes our counterparts may or may not ever accept us, no matter how hard we try to. Um, integrate into society as mm. you know established human beings in society that we're not trying to be we're trying to be the opposite of what they see us versus you know what what um, we really are and so that's just something that stood out for me for that piece how, and then how we and it's not just our counterparts it's also again we are just, you know, people of color can be just as discriminatory and biased with others as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. that was some, one of my takeaways. Take yeah, I think my, my biggest takeaway from that one was uh, self-love and self-acceptance. Mm -hmm. That at the end of the day, people are going to judge you. And, you know, you don't have any control over what they think yeah. or how they feel about it or anything else. But if you can go back to yourself and maintain your level of self-love yeah. and uh, self-respect, that that's going to go far, even if you're a big hippo. That is great. <laughs> you don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Remember that. Great, great, great takeaway. Uh, the ne next one was The Making of Bond by Luke mm, Johnson. Yeah, mm, yeah. This was fun. That one was very fun. Yeah. Uh, this was another comedic one, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And basically, we're on the set of a Bond film, and in comes James Bl Bond, but oh my gosh, he's black. And that's pretty much where it goes is, uh, yeah, this white actress being like, but I can't, I can't work with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was really funny, um, really uh, kind of putting into, I guess, the preposterousness of a black superhero kind of thing mm -hmm. that there is that in America there is kind of this belief that mm -hmm. we have our roles and to see somebody outside of that set role mm -hmm. is just preposterous that's just crazy mm -hmm. so yeah that's what I felt like this one touched on yeah that that one definitely touched on some things um the actors in there was Don Randall again Evan Williams Monica Dion Sue and Abid Hassan um very this was definitely a great comedy um, you know, there, there, this was, in my opinion, some of the subliminal messages and stereotypes the media still projects it, um, in theater and film. Again, it goes back to the first one we mentioned where I was saying how they don't feel being our counterparts, so just the media in general, that we can't carry a scene and be in a lead role. But um, my main takeaway with this was that if we could unify with one another, we can break down those barriers and we can break down those stereotypes of who someone of color can be a lead role, whether they're Asian, Hispanic, mm -hmm. black, or whatever. So that was my takeaway mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed this piece. Um, so what did you think? What was your takeaway? Yeah, from? my takeaway was kind of similar to yours, mm -hmm. you know, that we, we need to, especially in film, because you see it a lot in theater mm -hmm. uh, in terms of breaking down those roles, but we need to see that in film. Mm -hmm. I know that there was, uh, gosh, I can't remember if it was Shonda Rhimes, or uh, it was definitely a prominent black, um, female uh, uh, director, well, I should say producer, and it was uh, a redo of Romeo and Juliet, mm. but it was a multi-diverse cast, and I loved it, and I was like, we need to see that. We need yeah. to see a black Juliet. We need yeah. to see, you know, we just yeah. need to break these, uh, mm. these norms yeah. because uh, nobody needs to be put into a box, especially after 
2021 like I mean yeah. look how far we are in history yeah so and I think that actually brings us to the next piece oh, yeah, yeah. uh-huh a shade or two darker mm. by Joseph Arnon yeah yeah this was a period piece yeah, and, yeah. I hmm. how did you feel about this one Ladia? okay so the acting I really like the actors were Joey Laughlin Monica Dianchu Dianchu I hope I'm saying her name right and Steve Wise I really enjoyed the acting, I enjoyed um, the accents, I enjoyed the whole period. I, I just was not sure if, I was still like uncertain at, at the ending. I still couldn't grasp the ending of, yeah. of and without trying to give away what was going on, but um, I wasn't sure of the ending. Uh, it was, um, yeah, there wasn't much resolution. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting to kind of bring up mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, in the 1800s and in the, you know, in the past when you, you know, like sometimes you would have a dark child come out with two white parents mm -hmm. and uh, was it jeans? Is it an affair? Yeah. Is it that kind of thing? So, and then I liked the casting because it was so apparent that yes. this was a black child and not, you know, really high yellow where it could have been, you know, mm. something down the bloodline kind of thing, but we don't know, you know, because yeah. genetics are weird. They are. Um, sometimes somebody will come out with blue eyes and nobody's had yeah. blue eyes in a century. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that, that was uh, an interesting thing, the struggle between being seen and being accepted. Mm. I guess this was my takeaway is that, you know, that's kind of the hard thing with uh, parenting and children in general, that a lot of times uh, we feel like uh, we're not living up to our parents' expectations or, you know, those kind of things. So to uh, have to deal with that and then be a different race, yeah. um, that was really like, well, so yeah. But I, I agree with you in terms of resolution. Yeah, it was, it was, it was unsettling, however, I did have a good takeaway, and, and I'm going to kind of just kind of build off what you said. Is, mm -hmm. um, I, I think because I wasn't sure, like you, you kind of alluded to, if it was jeans or yeah. if it was an extramarital right. affair. Right, um, and I And so we, I guess it was for us to make our decision. I, But something that triggered me, not triggered me, but that kind of put the light bulb on me that made me think um, family secrets will destroy the family, mm. which was something that was said, and that was a, a takeaway that the you know the secrets in the family will destroy. And then keeping the silence with racism, um, mm. this child is suffering through racism because of the color of his skin, and the parents are not really supporting them, and they're kind of ducking. and And then there's the resentment of the father not knowing, you know, yeah, if that's his child or not, mm -hmm. and you know, so. Uh, that was my takeaway. Again, it was unresolved, and it may have been purposely unresolved because of the fact that they wanted us to draw our own conclusion. Sure. Um, but it was uh, it was a good piece. Yeah. Just yeah, it was it left me kind of left me kind of hanging. It was I don't thought know. provoking. Yeah, yeah. it was thought provoking. Yeah, it, so. it was moving. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. my favorite, but very moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that brings us next to the cleaning ladies yes. by uh, Clinicia D. Sit. Uh, Sibley, sorry. Yes. Um, and that was basically uh, set right after Malcolm X's assassination, mm -hmm. and they were sent in to, to the stage where mm -hmm. he had just died yeah. to clean up the slaughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this was a hugely dramatic piece. Uh, I love the actors in this, Latifah Johnson, mm -hmm. Michaela Murray, and uh, Gandia Johnson. They all did spectacular jobs. Um, I love Latifah's, um, she just has a way to bring the drama, man. Mm -hmm. I just love watching her act. Um, and yeah, this was a really powerful piece because it talks a lot about how we just try to move on when it's uh, um, one of our figures, you mm -hmm. know, it's just move on, go mm -hmm. go back to work, not, you know, uh, whereas, you know, maybe somebody else, you know, like, yeah, it might have been a ticker tape parade mm -hmm. and, you know, two week tribute, whatever. Uh, so yeah, so that was, I don't know, it was, it was a sad piece. Yeah. Just going back to that moment in time in history. Yeah, know, it definitely was, I, I would say, a, a very, it was an emotional piece. I would definitely say that um, in this piece per se, that uh, you made you you mentioned how 
like they just minimized the death like it didn't really matter like there's a death at at one o'clock and then all of a sudden after the death they're talking about clean so they could throw a party in that venue and again i love michaela and latifah i mean michaela makes the best choices mm -hmm. on stage she is a phenomenal actor i've seen her in several shows at 5280 latifah just she just pierced my heart um it was you know there is undertones of domestic violence and and the things that women put up through you know trying to sustain love and supporting their 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 spouse and bringing in the dollars and the times and you know this is, of course was in the times of the 50s and the 60s so you know the rights for a woman back then was uh completely different than it would be for today but something that was thought provoking that um was my, one of my main takeaways mm -hmm. Um, was that they said the most disrespected person is the black woman. Mm, yeah. And that stuck with me through the entire play. Um, and the fact that these black women are trying to make a living, the fact that a black woman is, is, is trying to go to school so she does whatever means necessary to pay for her tuition to better her life to get out of the ghetto. The fact that a, a, a black woman um, you know, has to clean every day for the rest of her life, that's only her skill set. The fact that the black woman is dealing with domestic violence and her, her husband is coming home because he's stressed out and he's taken out on her. Um, the fact that they have these black women cleaning up Malcolm's mess. Mm. I thought it was interesting. They didn't call the cleaning services, which could have been anybody of color. They called the black woman. So mm -hmm. this this play really uh, hit home. I would love to see this play in a full production. Um, I don't know what that would look like, but uh, I, I think that was one of my favorites. Um, there was yeah. others, but that was one of them that really, really, truly touched me. Yeah, I agree. This was definitely probably one of my favorites as well. Uh, it was just so thought provoking. And to your end, as far as you were saying, as far as the black woman mm -hmm. and the disrespect, the other thing that black women never got up until maybe the 80s and 90s was to get to be seen as beautiful and um, att attractive in the media and things like that. We were always hidden away. And maybe there'd be a Dorothy Dandridge, maybe there'd be a, you know, Lena Horne, but, you know, it wasn't on your regular you know like it was I remember I was shocked and so happy when Beyonce landed the Pepsi uh uh, campaign from mm -hmm. from Britney Spears and I was like whoa this is progress mm -hmm. like wow we're gonna get to see a beautiful black woman um, you know portrayed everywhere uh, so yeah so definitely going back to that time um, how hard it was and uh, you know my takeaway is I, I don't have any like anything really to add besides what yeah. you said because mm -hmm. you really kind of hit it on the on the head so so yeah it was just a great yeah. great little vignette um definitely worth seeing and like you said the actors were phenomenal yeah. michaela murray is so fun to watch <laughs> and uh latifah johnson she always just brings it home so yeah, yeah so it was great these are some great vignettes um i'm looking forward to just reviewing a whole bunch of plays everybody's getting out there um, we want to encourage you to go and support black theater or just theater in theater general. Theater in general. Yeah, yeah. You know? support the arts. And, and all of these, all of these, um, these director or writers actually are people of color. Mm -hmm. um, and the director was Dwayne Carrington, who, who directed this entire piece. Yes, of and all he these did videos. phenomenal. Yes, so I would want to give our kudos. So, so please go see the play. We'll put some shots of us taking pictures at the venue. They did, they remodeled the stage. It was. It looked great. Yeah, uh, Kenya Fashal's husband, Mr. Jean, Fashal, Jean Fashal, Jean. he built the stage. It was absolutely lovely. Um, so we just want to say thank you for sliding through yeah you know, um, we appreciate it um, you got any closing words and remarks you know we are actors from the dark side yeah. we're so happy that you came in and joined us please subscribe comment and like us so yeah, yeah. that's about it yeah. get out there and remember you don't have to remember to get up and get out and do something for yourself I'm Laios Muhammad an actor with purpose and I'm Raven Moon an actor with passion and we are actors from, from the, the dark, dark side, side.